Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain Free You. Today's topic, do the opposite to feel better. I'll explain it in a minute. Allow your body to relax, sink into the couch, the bed, wherever you are, loosen your muscles as much as you're able to. Some people are kind of tense. Allow your breathing to slow down a little bit. It's a message of safety. And I've had people say just getting their body to relax and return breathing to a natural pace is sometimes enough for symptoms to start settling down, especially if you are in a, in a flare-up and uh, the fear is there. A good way to interrupt, interrupt the fear is to just return to the breath and the body. The body is always present. The brain, time traveling, future, past, all over the place. <clears throat> so, do the opposite to feel better. And this came from the group coaching call. I forget who it was, but uh, one or two folks uh, mentioned that they do the opposite. What I mean by that is, let's say you're having a tough day. You're struggling. You're struggling for a reason. I'm not suggesting it's your fault, but you are struggling for a reason. Your brain is perceiving danger, and in some cases, admit it if this is you, in some cases, if you look back in hindsight, we're the ones feeding the danger. Our thinking, our avoidance, our beliefs, our willingness to <clears throat> to quickly dismiss TMS as the cause, perceive danger, pain as the cause. You know, whenever we get into a flare, it's very easy to go, mm, maybe it's not mind-body. But what if it is? And your brain is just perceiving danger. Notice a correlation between doubt, fear, and symptoms. Inevitably, if your symptoms are up, your fear, your perceived danger is also up. If your symptoms are sky high, you've probably been very fearful for a period of time. So, when I say do the opposite, if you're having a tough day, notice what you're doing. And if you're kind of freaking out, spitting in these merry-go-round of uh, fearful thoughts, oh no, what if it's not mind-body, what if there's something really wrong? Do the opposite. Well, what would be the opposite of freaking out? Calm, reassurance. Show little to no concern about your symptoms. What would be the opposite of sitting on the couch terrified to move to get up? Get up confidently. I'm good. Get up. Know that you're well. Remind yourself of the clarity and the confidence and the the assessments that you've taken and your knowledge of this mind-body work. Remind yourself that you're in this work for a reason because you've exhausted all the medical crap. They do not have the answer for you because the doctor can't help you with a physical treatment to resolve something that's created by your brain perceiving danger. There's no way a physical treatment's going to function for you unless it's kind of safety placebo type of effect but we don't want to treat it that way because the next time your brain perceives danger guess what symptoms will be there so you've exhausted the medical world if you're still doing that and it's not working do the opposite commit fully to mind body work you know as i call it knowledge and safety therapy commit here this is where the solution lies so if you're struggling, do the opposite. Now, if you're having a good day, stick with it. You're on to something, right? If you're having a good day, notice, where's my mindset? So the next time I have a rougher day, I can say, ooh, I remember that mindset. Maybe even take some notes. If you're having a good day, get out a pen and paper and go, where's my fear level? Where's my mindset? Where's my clarity? Am I confident? Am I really rock solid on my belief that this is nothing more than perceived than a perceived danger response with symptoms or pains? Right? When you're having a good day, make a note of this, of what's going on up here in your noggin. 
because you may need that reminder the next time you have a rough day. And then compare and say, oh, I'm having a tough day. Where's my mindset right now? Where's my fear level right now? Where's my doubt right now? Oh, let me get that little note card. And yeah, when I had a good day, my head was in a much different place. So if you're having a good day, stick with it. That's awesome. Make a note of it so you remember exactly where your mindset was. Because, you know, so many times people will say, my symptoms went up. What did I do? And they start to evaluate their activities. How did I move? Did I sleep differently? Did I walk too far? Did I go to the gym and maybe I worked out too hard? Or I knew I shouldn't have gone to the grocery store. And they're thinking about their activities and their movements and their all that stuff. And in many cases, people fail to look at the driving force behind the symptoms, which is the brain's perception of danger, which is really driven by your mindset. Do you believe perceived danger is the cause of your symptoms? Do you know that applies to you? Do you know there's a cure? Do you know you're capable? Are you not taking your thoughts seriously when the fearful thoughts go, what if, be careful, don't do this, don't do that? You know, take notice of your mindset first. Because it's not likely the activities or movement that you're doing or the foods you ate that are the cause of the symptom. It's the brain's perception of those things. That's the problem. So notice your mindset. If you're having a good day, notice your mindset. If you're having a bad day, immediately, what's my mindset? What's my fear, my doubt? my worries, my thinking, and am I buying into the fearful thoughts to say, hey, maybe I better go back to Google and start searching again. <clears throat> Doubt creates fear. Fear creates the perception of danger. Perception of danger creates symptom, or at minimum keeps them on if you've had them for a while. The answer is always in the mindset. The answer is always in your beliefs and thinking and worries and confidence and conviction and commitment. Like, I can do this. Mindset's the way. So, if you're having a tough day, notice your, what you're doing. Notice your mindset. Flip it upside down and do the opposite. If you're scared to move, do the opposite. Get up. Show yourself that you, you are... <coughs> excuse me, that you're capable. You can do this stuff, folks. Do the opposite. Mostly it's up here between, you know between your ears but it's activities too it's saying yes as opposed to saying no and if you're going out into the world and doing things but you're doing it from a fearful place and it's not going well do the opposite go out with confidence conviction kind of a so what who cares attitude i'm going to go to the grocery store because i haven't done that in a while and i'd really like to do it and i know i'm capable of it and if I get the symptoms while I'm there afterwards, who cares? It's a false alarm. Remember the clarity. These symptoms are just false alarms by a brain that's hypervigilant, overprotective, and just perceiving danger where it doesn't really exist. So do the opposite. Evaluate what's going on. Say, hmm, looks like the way I am thinking, acting, behaving, speaking is fueling the perception of danger and make a decision. All right, I'm going to do the opposite of these things I'm doing to fuel the symptoms. You know, if you're always looking at the calendar, I've been at this for this much time. Do the opposite. Put the calendar away. Stop giving a shit. I know people who say, I've been doing this for 92 days. It hasn't worked yet. Okay, stop counting the days. Do the opposite doesn't help you know if you've been at this work for a year or two five years and you're saying this stuff doesn't work it doesn't work but yet you're still freaking out every other day or every two days whenever the symptoms are a little more colorful the stuff works if you apply it consistently and uh if you're constantly going into a panic on days where your symptoms are colorful, 
That's not doing the work. That's not part of the solution. That's actually throwing, you know, putting a stick into the front spokes of a bicycle and wondering why you keep flipping over, right? If you understand this stuff, don't spend all your time convincing yourself that it's not working. Spend all your, t all your time convincing yourself you're safe and making a commitment to yourself that even when symptoms are high, darn it, I'm going to remain calm and I'm not going to get lost in the stories about this not working. Because it's the fear that's driving the stories and it's the fear that drives the perception of danger and it's the perception of danger that's driving the symptoms. So stop looking at the symptoms as the determining factor as to what's going on. Evaluate the mindset. Having a tough day? What's my thinking? Where's my mindset? Where's my belief? Where's my confidence? If it's in the toilet, do the opposite. Pick yourself up. Give yourself a little pep talk. You can do this. Come on, darn it. <clears throat> and for anybody struggling, look back to a time when you were doing better. And notice what your mindset was then. Which is why when you have a good day, make some notes. Write down exactly what your mindset, beliefs, your, your confidence, your fear levels were probably low. Make those notes so the next time you're struggling, you can go, I have the recipe. I've got an index card right here with the appropriate mindset for a good day. You've got the recipe. Why? Because you've experienced it. You know, and some people say, yeah, but I've never gotten completely better. Yeah, and you've never completely become confident in mind, body being the cause. Or even if you know that, you may not have gotten completely confident that you're able to do this or that this will work for you. You know, folks, this is predictable. Very, very predictable. And for the folks who say, you know, I haven't noticed a shift in my symptoms yet. The good question to ask yourself is, has there been a significant shift in my mindset and fear and doubt? And it's not always like, well, I know it's TMS, so why isn't it better? Because even just the belief that I don't know if I'm capable, I don't know if I can be consistent enough or confident or calm enough consistently to get better, that's doubt, that's fear, right? Make some decisions, make some commitments. I know you can do this, folks. I believe in you. I believe in you, 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 and you. The system is simple. Implementation is hard. But the symptom, system is simple. Consistent practice will get you there. So I'm going to wrap this one up. I love you. I appreciate you. I believe in you. You're not broken. Not mentally, physically, or emotionally. You are capable of doing this. And uh, if you need some help, want some, you know, guidance a few days a week, direct access with me, sit across a Zoom camera from each other, have conversations, consider the group coaching calls, um, painfreeyougroup.com. I'll let you read the details there, but you can cancel any time, join any day of the month. Uh, there's no limit to how many people can be there or not. I run four Zoom calls a week up to three hours, consider it almost like open office hours where you can just like walk into the doctor's office and get some help. You can show up to any one of these Zoom calls whenever. You don't have to start at the beginning and make it through all three hours and leave at the end. Come and go as you need to. Show up when you can. Raise your hand. Ask questions so we can have a conversation and so you can get direct coaching. Um, I think that will really help you. And at minimum, keep watching this stuff. But don't just watch. Consuming content and learning is not the solution. It's implementing this stuff. So put this stuff into action. And per yesterday's video, make it playful. Have some fun with this stuff. Have some fun in general. Learn to laugh. You know? I guarantee on our deathbed when we're all 105 years old and somebody says, Ah, what's your biggest regret? Nobody is going to say, I wish I took things more seriously. 
And I wish I carried around more fear with me. No, people are going to say, I wish I laughed more. I wish I loved more. I wish I didn't take everything so damn seriously. Even chronic symptoms. So I'm going to wrap this up, folks. Again, love you, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.